Hello, my dear friends. I'm Stanislav Shamayev, a licensed business immigration and corporate attorney in Miami, Florida. And today we're going to be discussing the visas that are good for education people. For those of you who teach, for those of you who are in a scholarly or academic field, this is going to be a great video for you because I will give you all the information that you need to know. At the end of this video, you will be able to learn how to get a free evaluation of your case if you satisfy the criteria of those visas we're going to be discussing. Let's go! All right, guys, as always, before we begin, let's smash that like button if you like my content and you know that my content is uh, one of the best on YouTube. And also, please subscribe to my YouTube channel because I see that only 70% of you subscribe to my YouTube channel among those who watch. If you among those 30% who are not subscribed, please do it right now because it shows me that you appreciate my content, that you like what I do, and that I don't waste my Sunday time when I could be with my family creating this great free content for you. So please give me that like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, who are you people? Who are you educational people? You are probably teaching in school, at college, at university. Maybe you are a professor, maybe you are uh, working at the lab, maybe you're working in a private organization teaching, or maybe you are the one who's pushing the science. Maybe you do publications, maybe you're developing some methods uh, of how to teach people, how to educate people. It doesn't really matter. As long as you have some touch to the education, be it uh, like in the front field, uh, educating people, having a course, uh, testing people, or something alongside with that. You can get a work visa in the US or you can even get a green card. So let's talk about these topics in groups because some of the visas that are non-immigrant and immigrant they still fall with, within the same category. First, let's talk about extraordinary visas for talented education people maybe like you. Here we need to satisfy at least three criteria out of eight in O1A visa or three criteria out of 10 in EB1A visa. What's important here is if you are in the education field, you probably have some publications, right? You have some academic scholarly publications. And if you don't, please start doing this because publications is a very good thing to start your talent visa. And O1 visa is not as intensive as to the evidence as uh, EB1A. And the difference between these two, besides that O1 is non-immigrant and EB1A is immigrant, meaning you will have a green card, is that O1A has the component of an employer. So you have to have an employee here in the States who is gonna uh, sponsor you, who's gonna give you the job offer to work here in the States. Also, it's possible to have your own company opened and that company is gonna be your employer, but you need to show that you have the funds to uh, scale that business, right? Maybe you wanna open a school or maybe some small educational project and you're gonna educate kids or adults or whatever that is. EB1A is different. It's self-petition, meaning that you don't have to have an employer, but you have to know exactly what you're gonna be doing here. So going back to the publications, this is probably one of the easiest criterion for you to satisfy because you're in the education field and oftentimes what I see that you guys have publications. Just recently, we got an approval for EB1A for a teacher, for Ukrainian professor who has been teaching uh, the courses in Odessa Government University, right? She had uh, about uh, 30 publications, she had dissertations, some books, and by the way, guys, dissertation. I'm already tired, I'm losing my voice to say that if you have a dissertation or if you have book or monographs or some scientific materials or academic materials. This is great because you can probably satisfy at least two criteria, the contribution to the field because dissertation and maybe some publication that have a lot of citations. How many is a lot? Well, anything 
above 50 or above 100 is probably a good sign that your publication could be also not only publication but a contribution to the field this is another this is two separate criteria but dissertation has a very high chance of success to satisfy the contribution to the field. Why? Because it's original. Dissertation can, cannot be not original. It has to be original. And of course, oftentimes it's a significant contribution to the field. Other people use it. Maybe there's some mythology, some approach so that's important for your talent, for the, your part of education. So remember, publications and dissertation, books, monographs, some scientific work, it's really good. It's really good. Like O1A is almost a slam dunk with this type of stuff. EB1A is a really good foundation for your green card. Also, if you make a better money than other professionals in your field, that's great. How much is uh, significantly more? Well, probably we can start with 20 to 30 percent more, but I want to see something really significant, like 50 percent, twice as much, right? Give me some good numbers. Further, you guys always go to the conferences, you are nominated to some kind of awards and prizes. So show me those prizes, show me those awards. Make sure they're really good for the industry, at least in your country, right? Some people think that to get a green card for EB1, you, got, you gotta have a Nobel Prize, like something crazy, some big internationally recognized things. This is not true. For hundreds of cases that I filed, or for all kind of categories, trust me, 70, maybe to 80% of those cases have zero international recognition. This is the national recognition, but you gotta be good. You gotta be good, and we gotta show that. If you call to speak at conferences and then they make a publication or they publish a book and they insert your name and your topic that you spoke on this conference this could be an award as well also the government grants some kind of government help to uh, develop something could be also an award or the prize don't be attached to like oh my god i didn't participate in these events i was never nominated Maybe you have like a letter from your from the president or from minister of your country or from the cabinet or from the Congress or maybe high top politicians in your country saying thank you for your contribution. This is also good thing. Think more broad about what is an achievement in your field of education. There is no limitation. Sometimes we use uh, comparable evidence or even alternative evidence to show that you're good in your field. Also, if a press writes about you, this is really good. We can close another criterion in uh, O1A or EB1A. Okay, enough about talents. If you guys want to learn more about how to get a green card or O1 visa for extraordinary people, I have a bunch of videos. Uh, that you can watch where you learn more about this type of visas. Let's go further. H-1B visa is great. You just need to have a, a good education, at least bachelor's or a master's, but you have got to have an employer and you have to be selected in the lottery. And lottery is once a year, every March for three weeks, you have maybe 25 to 30% to be selected. Not the best option, but it's always good to utilize it if your employer is willing to go that route. And by the way, O1 visa does not have limitations, no lottery, no particular this time of the year, like Christmas. No, you can file it anytime, likewise uh, EB1A. Further, EB2 and EB3, visas those are good options for you who also have an employer and those employers who are willing to wait for two two and a half years because there is a labor certification process and if if you don't know what labor certification process for eb2 or eb3 please watch this video here i'll give you more details about that but this is also a viable option next one of my favorite visas is eb2 national interest waiver it's the second exception after eb1a where we don't need to have an employer to get you a green card but we need to have a qualifying education as a bachelor's and five years of experience or master's or higher degree like phd so if you satisfy the education requirement then i need to know 
what exactly we're going to be doing here. And education is definitely in the national interest of the United States of America, even if it has only a local benefit. But the people you're going to educate, they're going to be playing a significant role in the United States of America. So make sure if you're from education field and you want to teach, you want to join a school, if you want to open up your own school, if you want to continue uh, publications and some scholarly academic work, that could be in the national interest of the United States of America and that could be a really easy uh, visa for you to get. So make sure that you know what you're going to be doing here and you will let me know. These are the main visas for education people. Of course, there's a J1 visa, there is a E2 investor visa, maybe there's a L1 visa. They also could be good for certain cases if you're from education field, but the ones that I mentioned are probably the best. So if you think that you satisfy certain criteria, maybe you're already confused, like, oh my God, Stanislav, it's too much, please stop. <laughs> Understand, I've been doing this over uh, seven years working for my company, and you guys know my company is 60 people, and uh, we have six departments, we have uh, the process, how to get your green card, we have a 90% success rate, and we know what we're doing, but I know there is a huge wall be between the lawyers and you who want to get access to lawyers. So. I build this process of free evaluation. You can get a free evaluation from me and what it means. If you answer the questions that I provided in the questionnaire, where are that questionnaire? In the description of this video. Find that visa that you think works for you or you can even fill out a few questionnaires for different visas, right? And I will analyze your uh, achievements, whatever you have, and I will tell you if it's a good or not very good petition or case and maybe I can even show you how to uh, make it better. But if you do this and I see this is a really good case, then I will invite you to immigration planning where I will build the strategy of filing your case. And this is how you start your immigration journey, the free evaluation, then immigration planning, and then you hire me to do your case. And of course, if you're satisfied, and I don't see any reason not to be satisfied because we are doing great job with the 90% approval rate across all visas. So please do answer those questions in the questionnaire in the links below this video. Give me that like under this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also subscribe to my Instagram and to my TikTok so you get the best content across all internet. I am Stanislav Shamayev, a lawyer of the future. Your future begins here. Good luck.